Hello world. Previously we had seen the implementation of internal temperature sensor based project wherein the data was displayed on an LCD. Now what if we want to monitor the values continuously over a PC or say we don't have an LCD. Now to monitor the value on a PC we can use the MSP430 UART and precisely that is what today's video is going to be about. That is monitoring the temperature sensor value over your PC using the UART. MSP430 Launchpad comes with a great option of USB to UART converter. Hence the values can be displayed on your PC using this converter. Now I have implemented software code wherein you can get the temperature value on demand. You can tweak it as per your requirement. And I have kept the code on my blog. So I have uploaded it on my blog and you can check the link in the description below. Now there's only one limit limitation of this existing USB to UART converter of your launchpad. However, we'll look at it at the end of this video. Now let's first understand the UART functionality. So the UART stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter and it is basically nothing but a hardware peripheral on your microcontroller which sends and receives serial data asynchronously. Now there's also a software based UART implementation but this video only covers the hardware UART. In a nutshell, the transmitting UART converts the parallel data from CPU into serial form and transmits it over TX to the receiving UART at RX. This receiving end con converts the serial data back into the parallel data for its CPU. Now two wires are used for this case, one for TX and one for RX and you can have full duplex communication. Now the A in the UART as we said stands for asynchronous which means that there isn't any clock signal which can synchronize the data transmitted from transmitter and received by the receiver. However, what we do have is start and stop bits um, are added so that the synchronization of data is possible and at the same time uh, both of these uh, receiver and the transmitter agree to communicate at a particular rate which is called as the baud rate and um, that's how the bits are transmitted at a particular frequency which they both decide beforehand before the transmission begins. So basically we can see that in our case we'll have start bit that is one start bit then there'll be seven or eight data bits in our case we'll be using eight and there can be one or two stop bits and also there can be a parity bit which I haven't included because we won't be using it but you can have even or odd parity bit. So that is the basic view of the UART. Then let's look at the UART in MSP430. So um, there's a module in MSP430 which is called as Universal Serial Communication Interface which supports multiple serial communication modes and UART is one of them. Now MSP430 G2553 has got two modules USCI A0 and USCI B0 and we'll be using the A01 which basically supports UART, the other doesn't. So we'll be using that. And on the left hand side you can see a diagram of the USCI module. Now the received data is uh, stored in the UC0RX buff, it, which is nothing but a buffer and the data to be transmitted is written to the TX buffer. Then there's also clock select. So there are four available clocks, actually three are available and out of which you can use any of them. So one clock is selected as the baud rate clock and then that clock is basically used to calculate or to compute your baud rate. Now the baud rate calculation is a little tedious and we'll be looking at it uh, next. And uh, before that, let's look at the configuration that we've used. So we've used 9600 baud rate and we've used 8N1, which is nothing but 8 stands for 8 data bits, N for no parity and 1 for one stop bit. So that is the configuration that we'll be using. Now let's look at the baud rate calculation. This is going to be a little tedious. So the first thing that we do is understand that there are several uh, standard baud rates at which the UART communication can take place like 4800, 9000, 9600, 115200 etc. Therefore to get the required baud rate what we need to do is we need to find something called as a division factor. 
which is called as n and it is given by fbrclk that is the frequency of the clock the baud rate clock that we select divided by the baud rate and this will usually be a non integer value therefore we'll have an integer part as well as a fractional part to manage in order to get the baud rate as close to the original value as possible so for this we will have one prescalar and one modulator stage um to be used to meet the factor as closely as possible now the modulator and the prescalar is something that we had already seen on the previous slide so those are the two uh, blocks that will be used for this purpose for the calculation now the integer part is written to a particular register of uart which is ucbrx and uh, the fractional portion is calculated using the mentioned formula and written to the ucbrsx bits of the uca0mctl register so the register is uca0mctl that is the modulation control register and uh, the ucbrsx are the bits of that register wherein the value of the fractional portion is mentioned so in this case what we basically do is we simply take the division factor value that is the original value with the decimal point and minus it uh, from the minus that or rather i would say that subtract the integer part from the division factor which we originally got with the decimal point and then multiply it with 8 and round it off so whatever the value that you get that will be used for your fractional portion so if you're wondering why 8 then that is nothing but for one byte of data so that is basically 8 bits so let's consider an example to understand this better so we'll consider the smclk that we've used for our project and also the baud rate that we've used for our project which is uh, 9600 and 1 megahertz is the clock that we've used so n will basically be equal to 1 megahertz divided by 9600 which will be around 104.167 now the integer portion that is ucbrx will be equal to 104 in this case so ucbr0 and ucbr1 there are two such registers which manage the lsb and the msb of the integer value that we get since we only have lsb so we write 104 in ucbr0 register once that is done the fractional portion is calculated using the formula that we've already discussed which comes around to be 1 so rounding it off we get 1 therefore in order to get approximately 9600 as the baud rate we'll have to change or we'll have to modulate between n and n plus 1 that is between 104 and 105 so we move from 104 to 105 for one bit as we can see from the modulation value or the ucbrsx value since uh, that came out to be one so basically for one particular bit you will have to switch from 104 to 105 and then we can have the uh, baud rate value as close to 9600 as possible but not exactly that and therefore we'll have minimum possible error now why don't we get the exact value it's because it isn't a integer value it is a non integer value and that's why you, we are using the modulator to get as close to that particular value of baud rate as possible so this is a little tedious calculation which we need to do for the baud rate part so the easiest way to configure the baud rate is to use the baud rate selection table which is given in the user manual so for 1 megahertz and 9600 uh, the value is already highlighted like for the ucbrx uh, register and ucbrsx register so we can directly use those values Let's look at some of the UART registers which are required for the configuration uh, of the UART in our code. So the first register is the control register zero, which has the first two bits which are used for parity. Now mostly everything in this, not mostly actually everything in register in this particular register is kept at its default value, since we don't have to modify anything. So 
we aren't going to change any of the values. So the first two bits are for the parity. And since we aren't using it, it is kept all zero and default. Then the next bit is for MSB first or LSB first. That is the direction of the receive and transmit shift register. And we've kept it at default, which is LSB first. The next is the length of the character, which is uh, seven or eight. And in this case, we've kept it at default eight. Then the number of stop bits which are required, we've again kept it as default, which is one. Um, then the mode is set. Again, this is default UART mode, so we don't have to change it. Then there is asynchronous or synchronous mode, which is the last bit. Again, it is default asynchronous. We haven't changed it. Then the next register is control register one. In this case, we've used uh, the first two bits of the select register, clock select register wherein we select SMCLK as our clock and uh, the last bit we've used, which is the software reset bit, UCSWRST, that we uh, basically, we have to set the USCI module in reset state before making any changes to any of the UART registers. And uh, that is basically the last bit of this particular register. Next, we have got BR0 and BR1, which we've already discussed, saves the integer part of our uh, divisor or the prescaler. Next, we've got MCTL register, modulation control register. And as we've already seen, the BRSX will hold the fractional portion or the fractional value for our baud rate. And UCOS 16 is basically used to select a particular mode. There is oversampling mode and uh, low frequency mode. Since we are using the default low frequency mode, that is the reason why we will not be requiring to set this bit, we'll keep it as default, whichever is the value, which is I think zero. Then the UCBRFX is nothing but the first modulation state, which is not required for low frequency mode. So these bits will be ignored in your modulation control register. Now, after having seen all the registers, let's understand the flow of code. So we start, then we stop the watchdog timer as a it isn't required for this. Then we simply uh, set the DCO digitally controlled oscillator at one megahertz. We set that clock. Then we set the UART mode and uh, via the control register zero as we had seen previously. Then the baud rate is set using again by inserting your appropriate values for your integer and fractional parts in prescalar and modulator registers that we had seen previously. Then ADC 10 is configured. Now link for the detailed explanation how this is done. That is the ADC 10 configuration. Again, you have to see the link in the description below. There is a particular project that I've done and I've explained in detail how you can configure this. So that is configured. Mind you, it is not started. The conversion is not started, but it is just simply all the values are configured properly. Then the RX interrupt is enabled. Um, now what we are doing in this case is we are giving the temperature value on demand. So when we receive a particular character, in our case it will be T. If we receive T, then only in that case we'll display the temperature value. So we keep the RX interrupt enabled and then we enter the low power mode. Then once a character is received, the RX ISR is called and it checks if this letter is equal to T. If it is, then in that case, it starts the ADC conversion. Then after the ADC conversion is started, the ADC 10 ISR is invoked, which basically just switches on the CPU, does nothing much. Once the CPU is turned on, we are back into the main flow. We get the temperature value from the ADC 10 mem register, convert this uh, temperature value, which is in integer to character, and then we are ready to transmit this value. So we basically enable the transmit interrupt. The moment we do that, the transmit in, uh, ISR is uh, invoked, wherein we transmit the temperature value, and then we disable the TX interrupt. Once this is done, we are back into the main flow, wherein we again begin from the RX interrupt, enabling of the RX interrupt. So ba basically this whole program then runs in a loop. And again, if we receive another uh, request with the letter T, again, we start the ADC conversion and give the value on demand, whichever is the, whatever is the temperature on demand at that point in time, and again, transmit it. So this is the whole flow for your uh, 
uh, software and if you want the code again it's in the blog link so uh, do check the blog link in the description below so this is the thing about your code now let's look at the hardware setup so we simply need launchpad and it has got USB connector which we connect to our PC and or maybe our laptop or whatever now one thing you have to remember is to align the jumper for hardware UART mode like so that is in the horizontal uh, position so make sure you do that otherwise it will run in the software UART mode and UART mode and you won't be able to see the output properly so make sure that this is done properly now on connecting the launch pad to your computer you can find out the COM port to which it is connected in the device manager of your computer for my case it is COM3 and then to see the output you can use any interface like PuTTY or TerraTerm I have used uh, TerraTerm to see the output temperature value so now let's quickly look at the demo of the execution so you have to turn on the debug mode once that is done you find out the com port com3 say serial new connection for TerraTerm go to the setup and uh, go to the terminal local echo should be enabled say ok within the setup then see the serial port so as you can see 8 and 1 is set that is 8 bit no parity stop bit 9600 now we'll just start a play or resume rather we're ready to see the value so the moment I type T I can see that T on my Terra term because I have enabled the local echo and the value of temperature is 37 so I can do it for a few more times and see if I'm getting the value so I'm just trying it out for four or five times You can try and get some hot object near the um, controller and see if the temperature increases. It definitely does. I've tried it. So you can try something like that. So this is the demonstration. Now let's look at the limitation. As I had said previously that there's a limitation to this. So it's time we look at it. So the launchpad's serial USB interface is limited to 9600 baud rate only so if you want to go anywhere above it then you cannot basically do that but is that the limitation of MSP430 UART? No it isn't so MSP430 UART is completely capable of supporting higher baud rates that is you can go for 115200 and so on and so forth but then in that case what you have to do is you can use something like an FTDI chip for that which is FT232RL chip which looks something like that and uh, it can it is nothing but a USB to UART converter an external converter you can use something like that instead of your launch pad converter and then you can get bo higher baud rates with this so you may require to use this if you are using UART for your Bluetooth module or something like that I've already used this so it is cheaply available on many shopping websites so you can purchase something like this and you can go with higher baud rates so um, yeah I think this is it for today if you want all the blog links and everything and the links for other videos then um, they'll be there in the description below do check them out and that's it for today hope you liked this video you hope you found it useful if you did then like the video and for more such videos related to embedded systems, subscribe to this channel and you won't regret it. Also, if you are someone who's pursuing engineering, then be a nice person and share the videos. Uh, sorry, video or videos, whichever you found helpful with your peers or friends. And uh, that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye world.